Hello trainers, Professor Palm here, and out of all 19 typings we currently have, the fighting type Pokemon are the most unique, mainly for the fact that most Pokemon fight with a set style, and that usually is how it goes, but with fighting types, like Lucario for example, every single one of them has a completely different battle style. That's what really makes fighting type so amazing. Hello, hello, Professor Palm. Also, yep, yep, I say fighting type Pokemon can be pretty creative on what they're based on. Anyways, what you up to, Palm? Ah, hello, Professor Sassafras. Good to see you. I was just talking about fighting type Pokemon, but I was also reflecting on Pokemon Legends Arceus, where they introduced to us the strong style and the agile style, which was really cool for battling. After all, there are so many fighting type Pokemon that have unique battle styles. What exactly do you mean by that, Palm? Oh, what I mean by that is, if you really think about it, every single fighting type Pokemon has their own interesting battle style. Also, if you really think even harder, every single region that we've had has introduced at least one fighting type expert, and they also have their own set of battle styles. Everyone is an expert in something. It's like that they were also taught by their own Pokemon. You're so right about that, Palm. Also, it's quite true just how many of these fighting experts and even some of the fighting type gym leaders have been students of their respective Pokemon fighting style masters. You know, I've actually never thought about it that way before, Professor Sassafras. I always teach my Pokemon brand new moves and brand new skills. It would be kind of cool to see a role reversal. I know, right? It makes me want to try to find a Pokemon to help me improve my own kickboxing endeavors. But, uh... Probably more on the basics like strength training. <laughs> Do you really think that we could learn some moves from fighting type? Well, okay, but who do you think is going to be the best teacher to show us how to fight? Of course we do. As for who would be a good teacher, I actually have two good recommendations. How about the Pokemon Sock and Throw? Sock and Throw? Wow, yeah! That's a great idea, Professor Sassafras. We can learn karate and judo from both of these black belt experts. Except I think I'm gonna leave the breaking boards to both of these. I only have a white belt. I don't even think I'm even close to getting my black belt or even an expert belt. Yeah, I'm certainly not experienced in those styles yet myself either, but hey, it never hurts to try new things, am I right? Okay, Sassafras, I trust you. I think it would be great to learn some fighting styles from these karate Pokemon. Maybe they could even teach us a little Taekwondo, maybe a little Judo, or even some Kung Fu. Oh, speaking of the subject of fighting styles, which is the one that you prefer? Well, I have already mentioned it, but I'm pretty into kickboxing personally. Although I'm still an amateur when it comes to the experience. What about you yourself, Pom? For me, I prefer to go the route of Lucario and fight with the power of Aura. Using this can help me find out who's pure of heart and who's not. I think that's one of the most unique battle styles ever. Not a bad choice indeed, Palm. Anywho's ready to get started on talking about these two martial art champs? Okay, Professor Sassafras, let's talk about the Karate and Judo Master. Let's learn their techniques, and let's see how many battles they've won as well as trophies they've collected. However, before we begin... I want to give a very special thanks and shout out to artist Tecranova for my shirt. Today's Within shirt I'm wearing is the Aura Within. Since Professor Sassafras and I are talking about fighting type Pokemon, what better to show it than with a fighting type Pokemon like Lucario. If you really like these Within shirts I wear in my videos, you can buy them off Etsy. I have a link to Tecranova's Etsy shop in the description below. You'll look amazing in the shirts. So please check out Tecranova and remember to say, Professor Palm sent ya. Alright, I'm fired up and ready to go into the ring, Palm. I'm absolutely ready to start this fight, Sassafras. Having two teachers here means I'm going to learn so many battle styles. Well, why don't we start this off with the Big Red Judo Champion itself, Throw! Throw the Judo Pokemon is based on Judoka, a Judo practitioner. However, Throw also draws inspiration from Namahage, a demon wearing an Oni mask known for its short temper and fighting, just like with its counterpart, Sock. If you wish to find Throw in the wild, you can find them in the mountains, as they prefer areas to do secluded training, and climbing up these mountains helps both their arms and their bodies get into top shape. 
By punching boulders and trees as it trains, Thoreau's hands endure a lot of pain, but doing this helps them grow even stronger. When the object they punch shatters into fragments, that's when Thro knows that they're ready to keep going. Just like its name says, Thro enjoying objects and even Pokemon larger than itself. With the power in both of its strong arms, Thro can throw anything. In fact, it can carry a garbage truck with one hand and throw it like a toddler throwing a ball. Thro enjoys showing that they're the best and they have no problem challenging bigger and stronger opponents as they prefer a challenge when fighting. However, if they have to take on a weak Pokemon, Thro will not fight as they do not prefer to show themselves as a bully as they fight with honor. In the wild, Thro live in packs of five and together they train, fight, and work together to be as strong as they can be. Some even call this group the Five Furious Fighters. However, if one member cannot keep up with the rest of the group, it'll discard its belt and leave, but try to find another one to be a part of. Since Throw used their hands for everything, they have a special hand and finger exercise that bulks them up for chopping and punching. These Pokemon use their hands and arms for everything. It's believed that they have more muscles in their arms and fingers than they do their entire body. When Throw begins a fight, it tightens its belt not only to bulk itself up, but also to give it an extra boost. Throw's belt grows darker as it absorbs sweat. Because these belts get so sweaty and break, Throw change their belts regularly. The black belts worn by Throw are completely handmade, as Throw weave them out of vines they find. Also, they're so good at making this that if you happen to own a Throw, it'll make you a black belt or an expert belt as a sign of partnership. Throw made its debut in the Black and White series episode, The Club Splosion Begins, where it was under the ownership of Montgomery, who, in the Club Splosion tournament, used Throw as his ace Pokemon. Well, now that we just met our first teacher and completed our Judo lesson, I'd say it's time we meet another teacher. So trainers, grab your gi and get ready to learn karate from the master of karate itself, Sock. Teach us everything we need to know about the Master of Karate, Professor Sassafras. Sock the Karate Pokemon is based on Karateka, which is a karate practitioner. However, Sock also draws inspiration from Namahage, which is a demon wearing an Oni mask known for having short tempers and fighting just like its counterpart throw. For its habitat, Sock can be found living in the mountains as they prefer that area due to secluded training and hiking up these mountains also helps them get into shape. Sock also enjoys the ever-changing environment because it keeps them on their feet for training. Also, it helps them test and challenge their limits, too. When Sock fights, it uses all of its limbs for battle, delivering powerful kicks, intense punches, and chaps with its hands and fingers. It even uses its rock-hard head to bring in some tough headbutts and smashes. Before Sock even gets ready, it starts with tying their belts. This gets them pumped up and gives them a rush of adrenaline. It's also said that this makes their kicks and punches more destructive. Also, while Sock has long legs and kicks, it uses its hands and arms as its preferred method when fighting. It's said that every Sock trains itself to the limit, and that it can break an entire mountain in half in one chop of its hand. Every minute for Sock when not battling is training. Sock desires to make karate chops and punches the strongest, and its training to perfection will go on for days without Sock eating a thing or even sleeping. If you see a Sock training in its single-minded pursuit of strength, it's best to quietly pass by because even disturbing their training angers them, and in turn they might make you the punching bag for their training. Sock are fearless fighters who have absolutely no thoughts of danger and will challenge anyone to a fight no matter their size and even when disadvantaged. Even with that mindset, Sock fights with honor, and when taking on an enemy that they know they defeated but won't stand down, they'll bow and walk away from the battle. They even know when they can't fight, and having lost, they walk away and signal that they've been defeated. Sock made its anime debut in the Black and White series episode, The Club Battle Hearts of Fury, the Mulga vs. Sock, where it was under the ownership of Stefan at Don George's Club Battle Tournament and would go on to be Stefan's main Pokemon. All Pokemon have some cool facts and tidbits about them, and Sock and Throw have some really cool ones. First of all, during development, 
Throw and Sock both had horns, which may hint towards their design originally being based on Oni. However, they were replaced with eyebrows as to not clash with Tornadoes and Thunderous. As nice as Sock and Thrill's colors were, they were originally reversed as Thrill was going to be blue and Sock was going to be red. Speaking of colors, Sock and Thrill have also been known to correlate with what games they appear in after the Unobi games. Throw has appeared to be captured in all the games with the more reddish color, while Sock can only be caught in the games that have more blue. Both Sock and Throw appear on the team of the Elite Four Fighting Type Specialist Marshall, and this is currently the first and only time they've appeared together on a team instead of individually. As of Gen 9, Throw is the only fully evolved fighting type Pokemon that cannot learn close combat. And, while both Sock and Throw have the same secondary ability Inner Focus and the same hidden ability Mold Breaker, they each have different first abilities, being sturdy for Sock and guts for Throw. These fighting type masters pack some unstoppable power whenever they go into battle. However, like almost all Pokemon, Sock and Throw have weaknesses as they're weak to three different types of moves, which are Flying type, Fairy type, and Psychic type. Even with those weaknesses, that won't stop Sock and Throw. When pushed down, they'll get up with their powerful fighting spirit. And with their spirit, they have the power of fighting moves at their hand that can do a lot of damage, which is super effective on Pokemon who are Dark type, Rock type, Ice type, Steel type, and Normal type. With those powerful kicks and punches coming, you can see why Sock and Throw rarely lose fights. They're ready and willing to go into a battle no matter what. Whether they have the advantage or disadvantage, these Pokemon fight without ever backing down. Judo, Karate, Kung Fu, or even Taekwondo. It's all the same for Sock and Throw, as these Pokemon are the perfect teachers in every one of these fighting styles. They don't just wear those black belts for nothing, you know? Yeah, they are true masters of the arts. However, I've always felt it strange or sort of funny to see two Pokemon wearing clothes when I first saw them, but the design's grown on me. I admire how different Sock and Throw are from many other fighting types. Most of the time, trainers like us teach Pokemon moves and battle strategies. This fighting duo, however, does the opposite. They teach us how to fight and even teach us moves for battle. They also come up with great battle strategies themselves. True! I also love how their designs bounce off each other. They show such a perfect balance of the categories that are so essential to be such a skilled fighter. When Sock and Throw come into the fight, you know things are getting serious. With all their skills on full display, you know you're not taking on any normal fighting type Pokemon. You're about to face the Karate Champs! These two are truly formidable opponents. Be best for you to have one on your side as an ally instead. So be sure to catch and possibly use one on your team if you've never given the chance to. That sure was some intense training with our Judo and Karate teachers. I feel like I sure have a long way to go if I want to earn my Black Belt or even my Expert Belt. Phew, tell me about it. It certainly humbled me with how much it takes just to cover the basics in training and to build up discipline. You're right, Professor Sassafras, and that's only half the battle. It's better to take things on as they come, rather than the full head-on. Thinking about all that training I went through today is really making me tired. I think I'm going to take a rest. That's actually a good idea, Palm. Be best if I go rest my mind and body after this endeavor. Shoot, you're right! How could I end this video without asking our fellow trainers here a few questions? Oh, you're right, Palm. Let's go and see what the trainers are thinking. Okay, trainers, when it comes to fighting type Pokemon, who's your all-time favorite fighting type as well as all-time favorite fighting type line? Also, what's the best typing ever paired up with fighting? We've had fighting type experts for every current region. So far, who's been your favorite and why? What's your favorite kind of fighting type Pokemon style? Also, if you played Pokemon Legends Arceus, what was the way that you liked to battle? Did you like to battle using the strong style, or were you one who was more of an agile style person? Since Sock and Throw are pure fighting type, do you prefer Pokemon that are pure fighting type, or what's your favorite type to be paired with it? And with the upcoming Pokemon Legends Z to A, do you think that 
sock and throw should get themselves regional variants, or should they even get themselves mega evolutions? If not, what other fighting type Pokemon deserves to go mega? Man, this definitely was an awesome time, as per usual, Palm. This time especially just makes me want to head to the gym sometime later. It was great to see you again, Professor Sassafras. I'm glad we did this. Right now, I'm feeling as powered up as both Sock and Throw. I have you to thank. Yep, I've had a blast. Until next time, I hope you and all our fellow trainers out there have an awesome day. Take care, Professor Sassafras. It was great to have you again. Well, trainers, if you liked what you saw, then please leave a like. If you have any questions, you want to answer any of the questions Professor Sassafras and I threw it at you, you want us to collaborate again on a certain Pokemon or something, or you want us to cover something that's going on in the current events of Pokemon, then please comment. And as always, if you like what you saw and you want to see more, smash that subscribe button below. As a Pokemon professor, it's my job to teach trainers like all of you. So I hope that you share my videos to as many trainers as you can. As a Pokemon professor, I want to meet as many of you as I can. Also, I would like to say, keep your head up, guard up, as well as avoid those punches and kicks since we talk all about fighting type Pokemon. And thanks for watching, trainers. Palm out. <laughs>